I just uh, turned on the TV for exactly this reason to make this video and uh, I instantly went to CNN channel 33 and um, first headline on the news that I see is fear of civil war in Iraq that is the key to this box here called the TV it's about fear and nothing else it's not about love it's not making you realize that there's a solution to war which is just stop doing it and to realize that all is love and all that stuff it's simply to perpetuate your uncertainty of the world around you your belief that the world is not here for you as a gift it's here to basically make you survive and everything is about survival and all you want to do is get to the next step which really is sort of an endless game of just go getting somewhere which doesn't really matter and not only that but tricking you to believe that you're not already where you need to be that's the key is that when you have food water basic shelter you can express creativity in certain ways when needs are met that is where we need to be and where we are always no matter what happens but basically um, when the, the whole point there it's right there fear 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 I'm gonna shut it off now but anyway so basically it's just like how do you get a girl to go buy beauty products well you make her fear ugliness then she is mentally equipped to go buy beauty products if she feels that she's the most beautiful whole and complete thing in the world she's not going to the store to buy beauty products end of the line you're not going to um, go to the store and buy a new lawnmower if you fear or if you don't fear asking your neighbor to borrow his lawnmower you're not going to go to the store to buy a new lawnmower if you don't fear um, letting your grass grow and saying who cares what the neighbors think laws were never put here for our benefit they were simply a creation to support those who have created them as the final ultimate say in reality you are not meant to have a say in this system and deliberately or not this is the way our world has evolved and it's an old paradigm based out of survival that's what our whole reality is based on in terms of economy everything what is a country really think about it I started thinking about all this stuff when I was a pretty small kid and I sort of realized I was like oh, okay well wolves have packs and they have territories and they set up these territories and they go around and they pee on rocks and trees in the forest and it tells other wolves this is my area this is my claim you cannot touch this because if you do there's going to be hell to pay and then well what is a flagpole that is P my friend that is literally a mark saying this is my land you cannot take it this is what I need to survive for my own survival but we all know when humans when we have mass technological capabilities and it's no longer gnashing of teeth and stuff like that like when we're all going survive 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 we're gonna ultimately destroy each other and that's the bottom line it's a choice between surviving or thriving and living in abundance and equality and all that stuff so the answer is always love the answer is always look inside yourself educate yourself follow your gut intuition because your gut there's many um, ancient scriptures and stuff that say basically your gut knows all and literally knowing is not held in the brain but it's actually held in the stomach energetically and that's why we do get gut feelings it actually stimulates there and you can 
it's not just a saying, right? So follow your gut, follow your instinct, always do what you know to be right. Believe in love, believe that you are here as a gift to the universe and the universe is here as a gift for you. When um, there's an Albert Einstein quote saying, Something along the lines of one must ultimately make a choice to decide whether the universe is for you or against you. And uh, when I first heard that, I was sort of before then I was really sort of up up in the air. I was sort of stuck in this semi fear based paradigm of like Darwinian Darwinian like cutthroat like survival of the fittest type thing. And then I realized when I heard that quote, I was like, the universe is for me, it, it loves me, it's, it's not against me, the stars, an exploding sun is not gonna, coming to kill you, the hurricanes are not meant to destroy you, these are natural phenomenon which correlate to our own conscious projections into the world, and um, there's a whole other host of things that go along with that, and, uh, one interesting example of it to to believe that we we see the world as it is projected is um, our bodies are made of energy and our hearts produce certain vibrational beats and um, when we operate out of two sort of spectrums which are the main spectrums and one is just a sub spectrum of love which would be fear when you operate out of fear you sort of walk around and your energy is emitting through your heart and this isn't just something that's hippy dippy whatever nonsense or not that hippies are nonsense hippies were correct but like you emit vibes out of your body and these can be scientifically measured and the thing is, is you walk around and you're basically tuning for it and basically when you walk down the street the people you bump into at certain times, uh, the situations you find yourself in, those situations are because of the tuning for capability, the way you resonate, the way you sort of seek out almost like a magnet to situations that resonate on the same level of frequency that you do. So if you find yourself saying, oh, my friends are always about drama and that's not me, I'm not about that, well quite chances are you're putting yourself into that situation where you're always seeking and finding those people out and how do you change it? You change it by changing your belief. You forget about the word drama. You don't say the word drama. There's no such thing. You just start focusing on the actual drive which is happiness. You say, oh, I you don't say I hate drama. You say, I love happiness. And when you say you love happiness, it creates a feeling and it directs you, your body will be directed towards that feeling and towards those situations. Just do this as a little experiment. I hate drama or I hate drama. You get an emotional gut feeling in your body and you can feel it. Now say, I love happiness. Like there's no like automatically you just feel amazing do it right now I hate drama I can't even say it without my eyebrows going down and implying physiologically that I'm angry I love happiness my eyes light up it's automatic so start choosing the words that you use in your daily life carefully start listening to your thoughts start analyzing your thoughts start saying what thoughts are mine and what thoughts have been produced by someone else that I have just sort of picked up out of the blue. I started doing this when I was a kid and I started realizing like 90% of the thoughts that I had were not mine. I didn't, like when I'd say look down at my new pair of jeans at some point and say Oh crap, Frig, I'm so angry, there's a stain on my pants. That's not my thought, I could care less if there's a stain on my pants. There's, it, it makes no relevance to my daily life, to my happiness, to my well-being, if there's a stain on my pants or not. That's just a simple example. 
But start going through your head and analyzing what thoughts are yours, what thoughts are put out there by somebody else, and what are the true thoughts, what are the ultimate true thoughts, what is the ultimate reality, and that ultimate reality that we all must acquire is that the belief is that all is love. Because if you do not have that ultimate reality, that all is one and all is love in your head, you will self-destruct from the belief of separation. You will become twisted. Your mind will become twisted and warped in the sense that you will not be able to um, find yourself in situations that make sense. You'll say, you won't come to the right solutions. For example, someone approaches you, they say, give me your wallet, give me this, give me that. You automatically say, screw you, go to hell, what are you trying to do? The situation escalates. Why does that situation escalate? It's because of the belief of separation. It's because you believe that this person begging to you for some resource has nothing to do with you and will... has no impact, basically. When you stop and think, what does this person actually need? What... the guy comes up to you, or a girl, whoever, says, give me your wallet, give me all your stuff. You stop and clearly with the truth, the reality of love, you say, friend, brother, sister, attachment, uh, one, whatever you want to call it, me, you, what do you need? Why are you bringing forth this situation that you are perpetuating towards me? In reality, this, of course, people would choose different words, but you would say about this, and the person would say, well, really, I don't want to harm you, I just, I'm poor, I'm impoverished, whatever, I need someone to talk to, I need resources, I'm struggling to survive here. And you would say, well, you or me, and your survival is my interest, because the more you survive and thrive, the more knowledge you have, the more health you have, the more health you have, the less health care resources you would take away from me and I would take away from you so our interests are joined always no one can ever say this person doesn't matter or that ant doesn't matter that leaf doesn't matter it all matters it all contributes and it all makes a difference because it's all related not theoretically factually we are all related and we are all one so when that person says to you Oh, I need food, I need to be able to express myself. You say, here's tools, here's water, here's shelter. Take this, live and thrive. And that person will come back years later, whatever it is, months later, days later, seconds later, and say, look at what I've done, look at what you've helped me do. And we can basically use that and feed off of each other and grow. That's what it's all about. It's all about growth. And there's um, a saying in, like, this sort of classical notion of science and Darwinism and stuff of it's survival of the fittest and nature is about competition. When in actuality, when in actual fact, there's minor levels of interaction where a bit of sort of uh, disharmony is necessary for survival. But in reality, when you look at all of nature, the holistic approach... Nature is one big, cooperative, harmonious development of life. And the clearest example that I've ever seen of this, and that really made it sink into my head, was that when you look at flowers, the way they basically um, grow and multiply in growing season, it's not like all flowers multiply and flower at once. They all... Um, distribute themselves coordinately over the whole summer or the whole growing season. So certain flowers start blooming in the spring, the earliest bugs get to wake up, they get to harness the nectar, etc. Then there's flowers that are early summer, then there's flowers that are midsummer, then there's flowers that are late in the fall, and they are the sort of closing chapter before winter. And all these flowers bloom at individual times. Some, of course, there's groups that bloom together, but they are still working towards each other. 
they choose different colors. You could say it's out of competition, but in another sense, you could say they're doing different things at different times, but in balance. They work together. This is the biggest lie, the biggest myth perpetuation in our universe, is that it's about competition and survival. When you are not even surviving to begin with, you are a soul, you are infinite light and energy that does not survive or die, it's just we are, we be. And many mystics and Buddhist monks and stuff and tell us this in ancient traditions, etc. I'd say we be, we do not die, we do not necessarily live either. We be and we exist and we thrive in this universe, basically. So that's what it's all about. Don't believe the hype. Don't follow sort of the mainstream whatever. That's an old dying paradigm of evolution that has been sort of ingrained with us as we've come up type thing and it's just it's gonna go it's those people who perpetuate that fear fear job losses health care not enough of this this is going down that's simply to keep their agenda going their fear based agenda going which is what they've forgotten the universe actually is it's they're basing it out of a false notion of survival and separation and that's what allows them to operate and do the things that they do go to war foreclose on somebody's home make them homeless etc it's out of fear and separation and separation is the key it's the prior step to the fear when all is one there's no death there's no life because all is life all is consciousness it's just one level of bliss always and we have to realize that remember it bring it home hold it in our hearts hold it in our chest perpetuate it perpetuate life the knowing of consciousness the knowing of infinity and uh, we'll all be better off for it and we'll all thrive and go beyond survival go beyond the everyday hustle and bustle of life and uh, we're going to do it. It's not even a choice. It's it's naturally what's going to come. We will create the harmonious reality that we deserve and that we long for. Because that's the ultimate truth. And anything else is a perpetuation of the lie, right? So it's only a matter of time. If you find yourself in a certain situation that doesn't benefit you, hang in there. But don't hang in there. Change it hang into something else, etc. type thing. And we'll all come together and we're all going to make this happen. So, turn on outside. Turn on to the world. Turn on to love. And, uh, that's what it's all about. Peace.